So I've got two number one 100 recovery cylinders here to store my plastic mate natural gas inside of. <laughs> An absolutely massive eight inch, 36 inch length heat exchanger shotgun condenser. Try to get as many oils as we can. Try clamp. An eight inch sight glass. All the eight inch stuff is massive. I can fit this on my head. Last but not least, a brand new four cylinder butane explosion proof recovery pump. This is two times stronger than the pump I already have. This will make the vacuum that's pulled on my machine stronger and improve everything. Thank you so much, BVV. You guys that are extractors, you, you know all this type of equipment. If you are getting into extraction or you need some new equipment, get it from BVV. Their quality is amazing. Shop BVV.com. Get your stuff there. Amazing stuff. Thank you, BVV. Once again, absolute huge thank you to BVV. Humongous. This new condenser is an absolute Mac Daddy unit huge thing i mean it fits almost like a gallon of water in the thing alone it feels like you know i just had to keep pouring water into my recirculating pump until it stopped beeping saying it's low water so i did just a little small test run just to see how the condensate was working and it didn't really get much from this run but it, it did have some really cool sights to see to see that a huge eight inch sight class it honestly just makes me want to get more eight inch pipes because it's such a big pipe and to be able to see so much is just so cool it's a privilege and you know I want to let you guys know, if you guys want to support this project, naturejab.com slash donate, naturejab.shop, get some merch, support Mother Earth, look good doing it. Testing out the new recovery pump there, you can see the vapor flow is absolutely crazy through these sight glasses. That's actually a bad thing though, because the vapor is traveling too fast through the condensers, which means I'm not really actually getting much condensate coming over. So, from that run, I also learned that my blades were damaged. The run was not working that well. This is the last time I'll be using these blades. The last time they're going to warp on me. Just look at it. Absolute trash. These blades are made of two-ply sheet metal. Welded together. And then I cut them out into circles and welded those together. And I was making these blades on, on an extreme budget. But also... I was making, I mean, just being very resourceful, you know, I got all the sheet metal for these blades for 40 bucks, and I actually intend to make some blades out of rebar. I'm kind of in a pinch right now, because right now, unfortunately, I'm not in a position right now where I can necessarily just get, you know, some stuff fabricated. I got to fabricate it myself, but I wanted to make it strong, so we're going to do rebar. But I want you guys to look at the blades. Notice how they're black, no rust. It's because there's a permanent layer of carbon and oil that coats everything on the inside of this machine. Now you look back here, and obviously these aren't black. These look like they have quite some dirt on them. This is actually because the last one I did, because the blades were damaged, the plastic couldn't break down properly. So you can actually see some plastic bit left in there in the blades. So what you see um, on the blades here on the surface level is literally like just plastic. The plastic gets degraded, but until it's completely degraded, you know, there's this leftover waxy stick stuff that ends up becoming the carbon and oil layer that's like a very protective coating. It's a super strong coating. And like I said, this is all up inside the machine as well. Just take a look at this. Um, take a look at the inside of the machine. The inside of the machine is really no different. Um, I'm just grabbing my light here so you can see, but you know, there's not a speck of rust anywhere on this freaking machine. And this machine is in some crazy chemical conditions. And obviously, I've run the machine probably close to 100 times since I've made it. You would think the inside would be rusty. And I left the machine outside. You know, it's been in the weather for so long. But no, that layer of carbon and oil is freaking strong as heck. An amazing, amazing uh, protective layer. It's almost like when you um kind of make stainless steel the chromium. And the stainless steel ends up creating an oxide layer that protects it. Same with like aluminum and aluminum oxide. It's like the very process that is so corrosive ends up coating all the metal in this super protective thing. It creates the very coating. And this coating is carbon. You know, carbon 
ain't going nowhere. You can't even melt carbon, pretty much. So it's on those blades, and it ain't coming off. So it's, it's amazing. I actually really love to see it. And I actually want to know if under events, you know, conditions of chlorine, will this carbon layer be penetrated and cause rust? So we'll see. But let's get to making these things out of rebar. And um, maybe we get from there, we can, you know, maybe do some more data with thicker metal that's like two times, no, two, three, four times thicker than this crap. So this is out of commission. Let's go ahead and get to this rebar. So first of all, guys, I got to say thank you to this tree. Honestly, I had to drill uh, two screws, two lag screws into this tree to put down this bracket, which let me have a base to bend the rebar around. Now, I tried to do this on actually um, a, a electrical pole. That was nearby and i know you're probably thinking like you're dumb as hell the electrical pole didn't have any electricity but the issue was the electrical pole was not a wide enough diameter the only thing i could find was this tree some people are like why don't you just cut down the tree listen guys my name is nature jab i love nature i i felt bad doing this to the tree just screwing the two lag bolts in there i'm not gonna cut down a living tree just so i could bend something temporary so just so i can slide it off the auger blades after to make it more convenient for myself i'm a welder i can weld together some stuff that i cut off Especially because it's such thick metal, I can get a real nice penetrating load on this. So, what I did was I bent it around the tree. I actually cut this one off way too um, way too far back. But then I, I cut it down the, the um, center, which allowed it to fall off the tree. And then after it was cut down the center and it fell off the tree, collected that, collected these semicircles. And then the semicircles are to be welded together in the fashion of an auger, a shaftless auger. Um, now, why do I do a shaftless auger? It's because if we had a shaft going down the middle of the auger, the microwaves would hit the shaft and reflect off the shaft and therefore affect the plastic less. Also, shaftless augers are better for really sticky materials because sometimes the plastic can like, melt and stick onto the shaft of the auger versus a shaftless auger there's not much to stick to. So we got all these semicircles here, as you see, and now it's time to get to welding. There's really nothing else to say. It's pretty self-explanatory. Let's get it, baby. Hold up, hold up, wait. Nature jab. Julian Brown, what is this ghetto ass stuff you're doing? You got a $100,000 grant from the co-founder of Reddit, and you're over here making these half-ass, handmade-ass, easy-bake-oven-ass blades from rebar instead of getting them manufactured properly. Guys, yes, I got a $100,000 grant, but it's not that's not the end of the story. It's not just easy selling. The grant is over two years, so it's actually $12,500 over every quarter of the year or every three months. So that comes down to, what, about three, well... $4,000 a month, and I've already spent almost all my freaking quarter of this month moving the damn machine and doing some computer upgrades and all this stuff, so I have no money to go get uh, an auger, and I need the auger to work in my machine right now to run it, so that way I can get to my next payment to do other upgrades, so I can always buy or manufacture uh, up better auger blades and put them in this machine. This machine is modular, but that's why. So there we have it, the completed blades. And I know, oh, they're running rough. Oh, I know, they aren't perfect. 
like I said, we always can upgrade them. But the good thing about these blades is they would never warp on me again. And they're going to do their job. Their only job is just to move forward masses of molten plastic to the end of the machine and agitate it. That's literally it. So they're going to do it. And it's going to be okay. Thank you very much for watching. Nature Jab out. If you want to support this project, naturejab.com slash donate, naturejab.shop. Take care, guys.